not intrigued by watching Kyler Murray run for his life. He's tiny. He is really, really smart. I don't see a transcendent play. He's not going to be a guy that can stand in the pocket and throw the ball 35 times a game. I don't know if he'll be able to take contact. Him being small limits just how successful he's going to be. These were all things that were said about the former Heisman Trophy winner, first overall NFL draft pick, and ninth overall MLB draft pick before he even stepped on the field in the National Football League. The Arizona Cardinals are set to have their franchise quarterback, Kyler Murray, on the field this Sunday. Murray's NFL career has been pretty solid to this point. A Rookie of the Year award, twice to the Pro Bowl, and an MVP caliber season prior to injury in 2021. Despite this, many fans and members of the media have very different narratives about Kyler. Why? Well, I'm not too sure. Kyler Murray is the most overhated player in the National Football League. Let's try to figure out why he's so universally disliked. Kyler has always been an extremely talented athlete. Born in Texas, so playing football was an obvious choice. We all know how good Texas high school football is, but Kyler made it look easy. 2014 Player of the Year, Mr. Texas Football twice, and most impressively, a perfect record in three seasons as a starting quarterback. Never been done before in the state of Texas. 2,000, 3,600, and 4,700 passing yards respectively, with well over 1,000 yards rushing in each year. Plus, 186 total touchdowns. Not too bad. It's even more impressive when you consider the fact he was one of the top baseball players in the country as well. Kyler was one of the top high school prospects in 2015 and would continue on the diamond through college. After joining Texas A&M as a quarterback following in his father's footsteps, Murray would sit behind Kyle Allen for just two games before becoming the starter as a true freshman in 2015. Murray showed flashes in only three starts, but wasn't quite as dominant at Texas A&M. After a season where he finished with 686 passing yards, five touchdowns, and seven interceptions, as well as 335 rushing yards and another touchdown, Kyler would decide to transfer to the University of Oklahoma. But due to the rules, he would have to sit out the entire 2016 season. Sitting behind Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Baker Mayfield in 2017, the bar was then very high for Kyler entering the 2018 season, and he would live up to every expectation and exceed them all. An unbelievable season setting the college football world on fire. 4,300 passing yards, 1,000 rushing, 42 passing touchdowns, and 12 more rushing. Winning the Heisman Trophy easily and helping Oklahoma achieve the first ever back-to-back -back winners with two different players that play the same position. The first question about Kyler Murray was whether or not he would decide to play baseball or football. Being drafted ninth overall by the Oakland Athletics in 2018, but he was still committed to football. However, the question was, could he play? After coming off a Heisman Trophy season, Murray should have been undoubtedly the number one pick in the NFL draft. However, that wasn't the case. There was a legit debate between he and Nick Bosa, mainly because there was a concern about Kyler's size. Being shorter than the average NFL quarterback, many were not sure he would be able to play in the NFL, especially when his play style was running around in the backfield. If he were to get drafted and play in the NFL, Kyler would join Doug Flutie, Davey O'Brien, and Eddie LeBaron as the shortest quarterbacks in league history. But let's add some perspective to this. Kyler Murray stands at 5'10. Russell Wilson is 5'11, and Drew Brees is 6 feet even. However, it was blown way out of proportion that Kyler was undersized. It was a huge deal at the time. The Arizona Cardinals, who recently had washed their hands of a messy Josh Rosen situation, held the number one overall pick, and they would select Kyler Murray, a franchise quarterback with his sights on turning around a franchise that had struggled for literally a hundred years, with very few bright spots, those being Kurt Warner and Carson Palmer. And with very little offensive support, Kyler Murray's rookie season ended with the Rookie of the Year award. Despite his size, Murray's playstyle made him one of the top quarterbacks in the league. 
throwing for 3,722 passing yards, which was more than the league MVP that season, Lamar Jackson. It's more impressive when you factor in that Kyler was sacked 48 times as a rookie. In 2020, he would throw for just shy of 4,000 yards while having 26 touchdown passes to 12 interceptions. And he was just as good rushing as any other quarterback in the league, with 800 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns, on his way to his first Pro Bowl nod. The 2021 season was the year of Kyler Murray. The Cardinals started undefeated, and Murray was running away with the MVP prior to getting hurt on Thursday Night Football against the Packers. Impressive numbers with 3,700 pass yards and 24 touchdowns. Rushing, he would put up nearly 500 yards. But the second half collapse of the Cardinals was well documented, and it started with a JJ Watt injury. And then it saw Kyler go down with an ankle injury, and it would somehow all fall on the shoulders of the quarterback. Now, I'm not saying Kyler was perfect that year, nobody was, but he was not the team's biggest problem. The playoff game against the Rams was a disappointing end to the season but it seemed to be all anybody remembered. Murray would sign a contract extension to stay with the Arizona Cardinals for the next half decade, which, given the musical chairs that Arizona has had at quarterback for essentially its entire existence, seemed like a smart move. But a lot of people disagreed. The fine print in the contract included a homework clause, stating that Murray must spend X amount of hours watching film per week. This would lead to Kyler's work ethic being brought into question, jokes about him playing video games started at an even more rapid pace, as early in his career Kyler had signed with FaZe Clan, which was met by controversy at that time, but even brought up more after this clause. Despite the Cardinals' decision to ultimately remove this clause, the hate continued for Kyler, which led to him calling his own press conference. He went on to list a few of his accolades before ultimately saying, quote, I'm honestly flattered that you all think that at my size, I can go out there and not prepare for the game and not take it serious. It's disrespectful to my peers, to all the great athletes and all the great players that are in this league. I'm not 6'7". I don't throw the ball 85 yards. I'm already behind the eight ball. I can't afford to take any shortcuts, no pun intended. But those things you can't accomplish if you don't take the game serious, if you don't prepare the right way, and it's laughable. I refuse to let my work ethic and my preparation be in question. Kyler would start trying to put this behind him in 2022, but it was the worst case scenario for the Cardinals, starting with DeAndre Hopkins getting suspended, and Kyler Murray was butting heads with Cliff Kingsbury. On December 12th, Murray would face the biggest setback of his young career, tearing his ACL on a non-contact play against the Patriots on Monday Night Football just about a minute into the game. The comeback is now on, and Kyler is about to hit the field for the first time in over 300 days. But while he was rehabbing from the injury, the media was continuously bashing him saying he has no future with the Cardinals, and some even going as far as to claim that his future in the NFL is at risk. Which is insane considering he was half a season removed from an MVP caliber year, but people still were pushing him down, unfairly too. If the problem is video games, where is that hate towards the 50% of the league that plays Madden? or the tournaments that the league organizes themselves. If the problem is height, I don't understand why. People always made a narrative that it would lead to more batted balls. However, Justin Herbert, who is one of the tallest quarterbacks in the league, has the most batted balls in all of football over the last three years. It just doesn't make sense why he's so universally hated. He did nothing wrong. He's a good person who's involved in the community and he's a damn good football player. But why is he continuously labeled as a bad teammate and a bust? And now that he's returning, people are trying to say that he's only making a comeback so he can be sure that the Cardinals don't replace him by drafting Caleb Williams. Instead of just accepting that he's ready to go 
and being happy that he's back from a substantial injury. Some people believe that he's just rushing himself back, and that's not the case. Jonathan Gannon said that the way they handle the return will be what is best for Kyler. He won't be playing because the Cardinals need him to play, he will be playing because he's ready. Hollywood Brown said that he's back to prove a point. The point that he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But by all means, if you've made it this far in the video and you still hate Kyler Murray, I can't prove you wrong with words. Watch him play. Cardinals fans are behind him. The staff is behind him too. Jonathan Gannon said that when he was hired, it was a very rare opportunity to be able to go to a team that already had a franchise quarterback. He is the future, and at just 26 years old, he's out for blood and ready to prove people wrong. Adversity will only make him stronger. As his idol, the great Bruce Lee said, if there is always light, you don't experience the light anymore. You have to have a rhythm of light and darkness.